talking about uh, topic 2.6, the environmental consequences of connectivity. We've already talked about quite a lot of these, um, but I do want to hint, hit at them again. And there's definitely some new stuff to talk about here. Uh, so first off, let's start with the spread of agriculture right, and the agricultural effects of that spread. Um, and probably the most important agricultural change during this era, um, again, we brought it up several times, is the um, the innovations in the spread of champa rice, um, originally from India uh, to Southeast Asia, and in particular Vietnam, uh, but especially China. It's going to lead to a massive population boom uh, down in China. Um, it's, it's a drought resistant, it's flood resistant, it can do two crops a year, right? It's an incredibly, incredibly important crop. Um, and uh, so we also see it really change how land is used, right? We see a lot of terraced farming, uh, which basically is the use of, of mountainous regions or hilly regions and kind of carving out um, uh, land from, from the hill to create terraced farming, which really also helps with irrigation, right? Um, we also have kind of rice paddies and lowlands, right? Because you can now afford uh, uh, to um, produce in lowlands and not be afraid of flooding, kind of killing your crop because it's flood resistant, right? Um, and so it creates uh, usage for previously unusable land, right? So basically increases the amount of potential farming um, that was, again, originally thought to either be you know too dry or too too uh, unstable for for food uh, or too wet and, and too prone to flooding right um and so we see kind of a southern migration within china um to the places where champa rice um was more plentiful right and food was um uh, uh more readily available okay so that's kind of one key one um, another one, uh, of course, is the bananas into Africa, um, into Sub-Saharan Africa. So these originally came all the way from Indonesia. Uh, and they made their way across the Indian Ocean Trade Network, right? Um, and then uh, they made their way to Madagascar, where you have this uh, very unique syncretic blend of Indonesian, Malay merchants, and African uh, people, right? Um, and so what we see um, is that this kind of opens up woodland areas uh, of, of Africa into, into for, for production of food, uh, especially with the use of ironworking. Um, allowing to kind of cultivate and, or, or um, deforest areas, which, you know, is needed for some farming. It's not necessarily good, and we'll talk about that in a second. It's actually just not good, but um, yeah. So uh, we saw especially um, could, could be harvested uh, where yams couldn't, right, sweet potatoes, uh, which was a key component of the uh, African diet at this at this point. So this really creates, again, more... More food variety leads to a higher population, right? Um, enriched diets, right, leads to population growth as, as well. You know, the more varied a diet is, that's also healthy, right? Um, if you're going to tell me I went to McDonald's one day and Burger King the other, I'm not going to necessarily call that healthy, you know. Okay. Um, and then uh, kind of the last major spread of crops here, right, is the is the um, the Muslim spread, right, the, the spread of by Muslim merchants of, uh, kind of key luxury crops, right, of, of key crops, um, not necessarily all luxury, but we have three we want to focus on, and that is cotton, that is sugar, and that is citrus fruit, right? Um, and so um, these three crops become very important, not just in places like Samarkand, um, right, but also particularly in Europe, right? Um, Europe really benefits from having these new crops. Um, and we'll also, as we see, especially with, with sugar originally, and then later on cotton, right, the desire for Europe, uh, Europeans to produce these things uh, is going to lead to a desire to expand because the environments, um, not only the, the, the environment of, you know, geographically of Europe, but also the environment of labor um, rights in Europe is going to prevent them from really producing cotton and sugar profitably. So they're going to try to find different ways to do that. 
which will, of course eventually uh, include the enslaving of Africans uh, into the New World when we get there in the next unit or the next time period. Okay. Um, so this all being said, um, is all mostly very good, um, for, for people population wise, uh, but we are going to see environmental degradation happen due to this, right? There's going to be new areas opened up, uh, to farming. Um, but also as an example, right, we saw overgrazing kind of destroy, um, the great Zimbabwe, right? Kind of led to their economic decline and disappearance, right? Um, and then we also see uh, overuse of farming. Overuse of farmland makes it less arable, right? Uh, and then also the deforestation, uh, especially in Europe, as Europe expands um, their their farming capabilities, right? This is going to lead to soil erosion, which means that the soil is no longer nearly as productive as it should be, right? Um, on top of all this, we do have a little ice age that occurs for about 500 years at the tail end of this era and into the next era um, is going to lead to a decrease uh, in farming, especially once again in Europe. Okay. Um, they also kind of talk about how this was possibly also a, a decline, one reason for the decline of the mines as well. Okay. Um, but probably the most important environmental impact uh, of the trade networks is, of course, the spread of epidemics, and in particular, one epidemic, right? Um, and, you know, we're kind of living this out today, right, with the coronavirus, right? The fact that that our interconnected international trade network, right, leads to um, the more exposure to this, uh, to deadly diseases, right? Um, and so what we see here um, is this all starts with the Mongols, right? The Mongols uh, spread fleas, uh, or bring fleas with them, um, uh, spreads the bubonic death via fleas on their horses, um, or the bubonic plague, let's call it. They keep changing up what it's called, right? Um, Mongols spread from uh, southern China, right, to Central Asia, and then from there, just the natural uh, routes of trade. Um, we then see it to Southwest Asia, uh, and then especially uh, into Europe as well. I shouldn't say especially, it's just that's the one we have the most chronicles of, right? Which again, might be kind of a, or a Western bias and point of view coming in, right? Um, and so um, this kills one third of people in Europe. Okay, which is uh, a lot of people. Um, and so what we see here is an increasing, a, a, in, or a kind of continuous decrease in agriculture right, during the time period, right, um, and so what we see here, though, at the same time, is that workers are become, become more valuable, uh, those who survived, right, and so because workers become more valuable, their relationship to the, their employers uh, really changes, right, um, and so we see a demand for higher wages occur throughout a large chunk of Europe, right, um, and so this again, uh, this kind of shifts away from helps us shift away from feudalism and more to the proto-capitalist society we're going to see uh, coming up in the next section. Okay, um, we also see massive areas. Uh, we see lots of death in in North Africa, China, and Central Asia. Okay, but two areas I want to point out that mostly escape this is South Asia and Sub-Saharan Africa. South Asia is really interesting. Nobody really knows why. Um, I think uh, the may, one of the major possibilities is that uh, is that um, they are not necessarily land traders. They're mostly trading across the Indian Ocean, and that is simply just less likely to have the plague, right? Um, uh, Sub-Saharan Africa, they talk about how they had fewer trading ports, but also um, the plague was endemic to large areas of Sub-Saharan Africa. Right, which made them just a little bit more resistant to the disease, right? Uh, so the the Black Plague, right, the bubonic plague spread by the Mongols is a massive, massive game changer. Again, not just in Europe, but also in China as well and in Southwest Asia. It's going to really destabilize these societies, right? But that's going to do it for the environmental impacts of the era, of trade of the era. 
Uh, and then in the next video, we will talk about the comparison of economic exchange routes uh, and ideas. But until then, I will see you guys. Later.